Late Jacob Olanya was a very good debater. And he also did a lot of research. Yesterday, <coughs> there was a colleague here who complained that some people speak, others don't. Parliament had a special sitting here to discuss the sale of Uganda Commercial Bank. For four hours, only four people spoke that day. I was a journalist here. The Honorable late Jacob Olanya spoke for two hours. He was joined by Honorable Mao, the late area Kategaya and Odongo to, and the day was done. In fact, my complaint these days is that Parliament sometimes turns into a talk show. Everybody wants to speak, even one who has nothing to say. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, therefore, in remembering uh, Jacob Oranya, the Speaker said those things are not working today. Order, point of order, yeah. Honorable Lillian, has changed there? now. Right, Honorable Speaker, members, whatever we speak in this House goes on the record of this Parliament. That Honorable Speaker, I would like to know if Honorable Semuji is in order to really pronounce everybody in this house to speak what he thinks is not relevant. It is very courteous to have the right... We respect him as a senior legislator, but I think the policy of this house is we respect each other and respect everyone's opinion. Is, there, is he therefore in order to, make, to, to mention on the floor? And I also request that is expounded from the answer. Thank you. Honorable Semuju, I think Rule 84 of our Rules of Procedure is very clear on the language we use. Yeah. We, we, we use the language that is courteous to each other. And you see, people are not here on their own volition. They were voted. Okay? Whether someone is performing well or not, the people to assess them are their voters. So th that's why we give people freedom here to speak. And, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, not judging each other. We don't judge. Here we don't judge each other. We debate. Okay? We have a contestation of ideas. So, Honorable Semuju, I think that was unkind at your Honorable colleagues. So, I, am, I am sorry, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I was thank only you. comparing uh, the past parliament and the present. And I've given you an example, bitter as it is, that for four hours, we had only four speakers. These days, you can have 50. I am not the presiding officer, but I am just telling you that these things used to happen. Mr. Speaker, <clears throat> the, there are two things that uh, I want to say, as we remember the late Jacob Oranya. The first I have said, debate and research. And uh, during that debate on UCB, these days things don't happen. If someone, I don't know how I'll put it without offending people, but if someone had the uh, information that uh, was superior, the MPs used to yield uh, their time and allow fewer people to speak. I remember when I had two days here of debating the oil sector, the Honorable Katun too and others who read the debate almost spoke for a whole day, us spoke the following day. So MPs should not get offended when you have a colleague who has done research and you want to benefit from him. Mr. Speaker, two things before I sit. The first is the death of Ranya. We were told here by the Minister of Health that part of the reason he could not receive the kind of treatment that he was supposed to receive was because of the harassment he had been subjected to by the NRM government when he was a Makere Guild speaker that affected his life. I want to caution this government to stop harassing leaders and Ugandans. Later on, the body parts, so all part, the, Dr. Chris Mariumus can help. I don't remember the specific word the Minister of Health used. <laughs> I may want it stronger to defend my life when you have uh, taken it the way you took the one of Oranya. 
That was in the Minister of Health's speech here. Related to that, the father of Honorable Boranya at the funeral, at the burial, said that his son had been killed. They were attempted to make some arrests. Can we be briefed today whether that matter has also been resolved? Finally, the Honorable Jacob Boranya came here in this parliament the 7th as UPC. He died as NRM. The one point I want to make especially to the NRM leaders, because if I look, many of you are new. People used to sit there where the Prime Minister is sitting. The Kategayas, the Mushegas. You can love NRM, but I don't think your love will equal those who went to shed blood for it in the world. You need to do the right thing when you are a leader here. Because today you are, tomorrow you are not. But also that the party, that, uh, because I see people think that NRM is some sort of a faith. The things you are supposed to do here as parliament, including political reforms, constitutional amendment. Why is the prime minister agitated? Why don't you return Mavati? <laughs> don't be agitated. No, colleagues, we are paying tribute to our colleague, okay? Uh, please, Honorable Prime Minister. Colleagues. Ca can we listen to each other? Colleagues, uh, we are debating and paying tribute to our colleague. And, uh, and you see, I've decided to leave Honorable Semuju to speak. Okay, so, 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 so that, you know, you know when you're paying tribute to a colleague, maybe there are things which are deep inside, and you want a colleague to bring them out. But only now it seems you've started uh, huh? <laughs> go, go, going beyond. Kind of conclude. Please conclude. I, I therefore, Mr. Speaker, want to thank this parliament for putting a uh, a day to remember the, honor, the Honorable late Jacob Bolanya. He died so early in his career as a speaker. And having suffered the five years he spoke about there, I was one of those who were looking forward to a parliament led by him. We will... Oh, but, but Honorable... If a colleague is looking forward to something, what's wrong with that? Yeah, I'm going to allow you. I'm going to allow you to come and you explain. Okay, you're going to have a chance to. Because it's a debate. This is a debate. It's not a statement. It's a debate. So you have a chance. I want to thank Parliament, Mr. Speaker, because there are many points of order for different interests. I we I don't want to spoil the day. Thank you. Thank you very much for putting aside this day to remember late Jacob Oranya, who always wanted the truth to be said, even if it is very painful. You can actually look tough because truth has been said, but he always wanted it said. And he was... A, he I elected, thought you had concluded. Yes, I'm concluding. He elected reconciliation. Mr. Speaker, when he was a deputy speaker, he brought here a policeman to drag me out of parliament. But later he reached out to me and we had a conversation. He said, now we can move forward. There are leaders here. In, 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 uh, okay, let me not say in this parliament. Let me stop at saying there are leaders here. Who are, their level of vengeance is too much. You can even see it when they are walking. <laughs> but I want to thank Oranya. Even when you had uh, trouble with him, he took it... Uh, no, no, I have said leaders. He took it upon himself <laughs> to reach you? out to, to you so you resolve that matter. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Th thank you. Now, I think we shall end up making that the Prime Minister should reach out when I was a Muju. Then issues get solved. Uh, colleagues, uh, as you know, the rate working out in being healthy, in doing exercise. Uh, so... Uh, Members, we have personal health management program for parliament. 
on Monday, 27th March 2023. We shall have a fitness session in the South Wing parking starting at 5 p.m. It will be led by our fitness team, which includes some of our colleagues. Now, before I allow on Nabukera, I had wanted to, to, I had not seen him, but I had wanted to start with the chairman, a Chori parliamentary group. Right, Honorable Speaker, allow me to thank you in a special way for this great day. But also allow me to thank you for a book that you published as Parliament at the time when Jacob died, and it was containing 256 quotes from the great lawyer and politician. I would like to request members to get this book. If you want to have answer of life, whether it is polit politics, whether it is about you know, humanity, about human rights, you really get it in that book. And that shows to me, I always quote a book by Robin Sharma, Who Will Cry When You Die? And the book says, when you are born, you always cry when others are laughing. On the day when you are dead, when you are dead, you are buried. You should live your life in such a way that people will cry when you smile. And I think Jacob is smiling at us because we have known how good he has been in this world. Let me take a few quotes from that book that was published by this parliament. And one of the quotes is, our love for one another is a command from God. And that love must not keep a record of wrongs. If anything, it will answer most of the things we've been talking here. It will answer the issue that my colleague, Honorable Semu Junganda, was raising, that you have to reconcile after any conflict. You don't need to keep records of the wrongs that somebody has done to your life. And that is something that matters in our life a lot. Another quote in the same book, if someone is thirsty, they will need water, and it will not be blue or yellow or red water. It tells you, irrespective of the parties we belong, our blood is red. If anything, we are all UPC. We are not NRM, we are not NOOP, we are not FDC, we are all UPC everywhere. Our, our, our blood is red. And that is the point that he raised in that very important quote. Then another one, the, 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 the last quote I will give. The rivers, lakes, and the mountains that separate us are not deeper than the blood that connects us human beings. That honorable speaker and honorable colleagues, if we are today commemorating the life of this great man who served humanity, who really gave diligent service to this country, I would like to thank the leadership of this parliament to really, really have taken this opportunity to give members to remember this great man. Above all, I have been reading the, the, the answer of that day almost took me two days to read it. And I read all that members were talking on that great day on the 5th of April last year. It shows to you that the life of this great man touched the life of all of us. And that calls for all of us to try to emulate on our own living. How are we touching life of the others? And if you put that into practice, then one of the things that I read from the court, you will be a good neighbor to each other. Thank that you. Honorable Speaker, Conclude, honorable very please. important is that on that day we had many resolutions. And I would like to request kindly that as Parliament we extract from that debate and make sure we try to see the performance of this Parliament in terms of uh, are putting it into practice. I thank you very much for this opportunity. 
as leaders from Acholi sub-region, we are very happy for what the parliament has done, and we are happy on all the members of parliament to have accorded this day. But above all, for the support you've given to the family. I also know that there are other promises that are not yet done, but I think I use this opportunity to request that they should be implemented. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable. Age to provide unity, to provide leadership to the country at the time we are looking at transition. When his death was announced, so many Ugandans, those who do not even pay attention to politics, were hurt. And up to today, they still feel that he deserved to live more. He was somebody with a very humble uh, social life. Many of us who are here in Parliament and outside, when you interacted with him, especially when it's time for entertainment, I don't think many of us could actually beat him when it comes to dancing. He was that humble and down to earth. He was uh, quite intelligent, well read, and I think he was so angry to learn more and more that he read so widely. He read so widely to build capacity around himself to be able to provide leadership in this house. The late was also very assertive. Whenever a debate came up here and you stood up to speak, he would test you whether you're actually ready to speak. He would test you and shake you, and if you are not ready, you would sit down. But all he was doing, do you really need to speak about this matter or not? So if you are not well prepared, you would actually go back. He would only take, uh, he would only take people who are quite serious. I must also salute his courage that the late was one of the most courageous Ugandans. We remember what he said in Kololo when we were celebrating, commemorating the anti-corruption day. Not many Ugandans can actually challenge anyone who is not corrupt to stand up when he knows the president is there. He did. And the whole Kololo fell silent. That courage was above himself. Lastly, he had mastered how government is run. For many of us who are here, every time you approach him in his office, he would pick his uh, phone and call the minister. And he would allow you to speak to the minister. If you are satisfied, you will not even now come to the floor here. If you are not, he would allow you to come here. He had experience in how government is run, and I think we have a big leaf to pick from there. The second dimension is what Madam Speaker had promised us, and I want to remind us that today... Ca ca can you conclude? No, the, sec the second dimension is the Uganda we want debate. And I think that this day, uh, the Right Honourable Speaker had guided, we should be able to speak about that. And Mr. Speaker, allow me just to outline that uh, the late wanted a responsive government that would respond to the service needs of the citizens. He wanted a people-centered parliament, parliament that would debate the issues that touch on the people. He wanted the, a, a country where the rule of law is observed. He wanted equitable resource allocation during budgetary periods. He would take personal care to ensure that the entire country is budgeted for. And this is where I would like to invite our presiding officers that as we undertake the budget, let's look at Uganda, let's look at the country, let's look at all the constituencies so that they are provided for in this budget. I want to thank you. They say to us, we should be our brother's keeper. Let us all be our brother's keeper. I thank you so much, Mr. Thank speaker. you, Honorable Jonathan. As the speaker of the guild. And you could notice quickly that he was a political giant and who later on made uh, progress to become a statesman. Uh, right, Honorable Speaker, um, in a political contestation, uh, there is normally the winning side and the loser. I remember when he decided to run for speaker of the house, uh, he called me, I was elected as an independent member of parliament, and indeed, uh, he ordered me uh, to join the NRM team at Changkwanzi. So I've never been to the Yellow House, and I thank God that I went because uh, I, I, during that moment, I got to know many of my colleagues uh, in the 11th parliament. But as we all recall, uh, that election was quite tumultuous, and later on when he became the speaker, uh, something which I learned from him, that he worked for the unity of this house. Even our colleagues who were on the other side, he accommodated them, uh, he treated them as one team. 
so it's something that we should all learn from the uh, late uh, uh, right honorable speaker, Jacob Olanya. Uh, as Honorable Jonathan Odura said, uh, before he passed on, he was very passionate about us to have a debate on the Uganda we want. And I think, uh, as we have agreed, uh, we should have this debate so that we can progress our democracy and social development and transformation, uh, so that we all have uh, points of convergence in terms of where we would want our country to go. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, uh, when the late speaker was elected as the vice chairperson for NRM uh, for the North, he brought unity in that region. As you're aware, we've had uh, long-term insurgencies in Lango and actually sub-region. We've had wars in West Nile and a divided team. We all agreed that he was our leader. So he was able to unite our people. And I think those initiatives have remained with us uh, up, to, up to today. One of the things that he taught us as well is culture. Uh, he was very rich. Thank you, Honorable. I submit right now. On this with the rate. You see, it's not a matter of just coming, having a day of debating the Uganda we want. Everything we do in this house on a daily basis should be for the Uganda we want. From the laws we pass, the resolutions we make, the budgeting process, how we, you know, I don't think we do anything here for the Uganda we don't want. <laughs> Everything we are doing here, eh? you know, I, 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 it doesn't have to be just one single day. You come here, we debate, we talk, and this is the Uganda we want. Let's, in whatever we are doing on this floor of parliament, let's, on our mind, know that we are doing it for the Uganda we want. If you are doing it for the Uganda you don't want, <laughs> please. But uh, we shall discuss uh, the leadership of the House. We shall consult. Uh, with the government side, with the opposition side, we see how best uh, we can resolve this. Okay? So I had allowed only over joining Mr. There are colleagues I had picked at first. Administrative units. But also on this floor, you would hardly have a debate without local government issues coming up. So you would normally pick a, a phone and call me. He says, My sister, I yeah, where this is coming on the floor. Today, just to prepare. And I looked at him as a kind person, as somebody who really cared. But most importantly, he was a very humble man. I walked to his office to invite him to my constituency. But I was not sure that he would accept. So I went with my letter but I did not put the date. So when I go to his office, he told me, have you put it in the writing? I said, yes. Just called his secretary to bring a calendar, and he, he, he put a date there and then. And indeed he came to Chibuku, and he kept time. Keeping time was not only in parliament here, but also whenever he visited. I dared him and said 10, and by 10 he was in Tirinyi. My people had not yet come, but he patiently sat and waited for them. And he gave us, he had a big heart. He gave my people dollars. Many of them were seeing the dollars for the first time, and they talked about it for almost a year. He had a big heart. He was an orator. He spoke very well about me. And I now am here because he was a part of the project. But more importantly, I didn't believe in rumors. During election of speakers, somebody accused me before the president that I was not supporting Right Honorable Olanya. Right Honorable picked a phone. He called me, he said, but you know, my sister, I knew in your house, I was counting on two votes. No. Well, I'll never conclude. Conclude, yeah. Your vote and your husband's vote. 
I said yes, yes, Dr. Biakatunda, the workers MD. So I, I told him yes, I told you for me, I will throw the party line, and now that you are the party candidate, I'm going to support you. And he laughed it off, and indeed, I voted for him. We shall miss him, but right on, allow me to thank the people of Omolo for appreciating and supporting our brother and appreciating him further by voting his dear son. We want to thank you. May God bless you. Thank you. Honorable Lili Anabe, and uh, then Honorable Judy. You are dead. You never have time to tell anybody to encourage them to thank them for the good things they have done. Let's learn that. I'm saying, I, was, I said some of the people. Right Honorable Speaker, the man we are talking about today was an inspiration to many people. He believed in functionality of systems in this country and he embraced and wanted to see every system function without favor, without any kind of influence. To the extent that even if you go to Right Honorable Speaker, uh, the late Speaker Olanya's office, he will not make a decision to support you because he knows you or because you come from Macholi or you are tall or short, he would do the right thing based on what is supposed to be done. And that was, I think, a trait that I admired and really I wanted to, to operate like him. Right, Honorable Speaker, on corruption. Yesterday I was playing his uh, audio. We need to ask ourselves questions. The late Right Honorable Speaker Lanya is gone, but are we corrupt or we are not corrupt? Is it the Uganda we want or Uganda we don't want? Right, Honorable Speaker, I'm very happy that today we are standing here and we are in this house when we have passed the homosexuality bill, which was going to affect our culture. Right, Honorable Speaker, the late believed in cultural norms and, of course, having come from the culture which had all varieties of, of, of different dances and the richest culture in this world, in this country, that is the Acholi culture, he embraced it and admired it. Right, Honorable Speaker, my appeal is Omoro District remains to be supported. Whether Olanya, Relate Olanya is alive or is gone now, the sun is here and I thank this house for standing firm. You went on ground and supported him and gave him all the... the thank you. Now, colleagues, we shall see on Sunday we are supposed to be in Omoro with my issues. That's when I had court issues. And he encouraged me to be courageous and never to fear anything and never to fight back. The right honorable speaker advised that human beings may fail to resolve their issues, but God shall always be there to provide a permanent solution. I'm happy to note that with his guidance, and when we divided, the, when we had issues here of uh, splitting the constituencies, he called me a day after and said, do you remember what I told you? God has provided a permanent solution. And I'm here to testify that with his guidance, we are happily serving, we are living together, and we are celebrating together. Right, Honorable Speaker, I remember when you said that the Right Honorable Speaker, Red Jacob Oranya, said there is no bigger problem that cannot be resolved. I remember during the campaigns, I was the chairman of the, of the opponent, and of his opponent, and after elections, he called me and said, congratulations. And I also told him, congratulations. And that was it. We, we had a good time until the time of his demise. I remember right honorable speaker, he told me when he was giving me his words of wisdom to be courageous and never to share personal problems with the public. I remember he as members of parliament, in tennis parliament, when he was indisposed, we were looking for him. Where is he? And he was quiet there. And it was so unfortunate that at the time of his demise, 
I was also indisposed. I did not even bury him. I had serious issues with my health, and I did not attend his burial. But I remember his word that even if you are at your sick bed, never share your personal problems with the public. Only share with your confidence. May his soul rest in it. Thank you, Honorable Mutuzo. Then, Honorable Adiyomu. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, as we pick memories of the late Jacob Olanya, former Speaker of Parliament, I want to acknowledge his support to the Minister of Gender. There isn't a single function we held and missed him in his bold tie and white shirt. He was not only academically intelligent, but he was also a very smart man. In his works, in his works, in his ways, has done something. And I feel that I needed to inform you, as we talk now, 75% of the already budgeted money for roads has been sent to the districts. Let me, let me conclude, colleagues. The President of the Republic of Uganda, Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, Tebu Havurwa, who has just started his first term as Tebu Havurwa, right Let the Speaker protect me. Please go. Has he given a directive, and I wish what, I would be given. Honourable Prime Minister, please go on. I wish I would be given chance. He has given a directive that he, I must first track that wish, bearing in mind that we have to have money as a country put in the budget, and I know Parliament of Uganda is charged with the responsibility to appropriate. In the after we get money, it is our wish that we support our district. If there are those big districts who already are getting one billion and above. Say like Wakiso. Wakiso is getting more than one billion. Kakumiro is getting 300, <laughs> unfortunately, because we are not as big as Wakiso. A district like Kabare, those big districts that you know, those are, that have a bigger a kilometer coverage of roads are getting some, some good amount of money. And therefore, you, right honorable speaker, I request that members of parliament pick interest in the already available resources so that they are put to good use. Thank you so much. Thank you. The question is only when a member is on the floor. Now we don't have anyone on the floor. Okay? So let's go back to our issue. We shall have enough time to discuss budget-related issues. I'm still this side. I'm coming this side.